Hi, everybody. I have information that I want to pass along in the hopes that it gets circulated by you guys on the leaders of, oh boy, this uh, climate change, all of the protests that were happening Friday, uh, the UN meeting with 500 young climate leaders the leaders of the climate change movement and our new poster girl, Greta Thunberg, the manufacturing of that 16-year-old who I guess has captured the minds and the hearts of political leaders around the world, governments around the world, mainstream media is right on her, right? And people can't see through why this 16-year-old is getting so much attention. All righty. Well, because it's all staged, and she's part of the staging. So, yeah, all right. Uh, global climate strikes. Several hundred young activists, including Greta, gathered for a climate summit Yes, listen to the teenagers, United Nations. Listen to the teenagers. Okay. Uh, they have become the experts. No. Most are being exploited. Greta here. No, she's not being exploited. She's working the movement. But these kids who show up thinking that they're showing up for a good cause... It is outrageous that adults do this, and outrageous that uh, we don't hear the outrage from other adults about the exploitation of these kids. All right, the climate and ecological crisis is the political crisis of our time. It's the economic crisis of our time. It's the cul cultural crisis of our time, and well, Greta, she said, this is only the beginning. And you know what? She's right. They're going to force this upon all of us very soon. Changes are coming about really soon. Why? Because the majority of people do not care to turn on their critical thinking switch and do the research necessary to find out that this climate change, global warming hysteria is a lie. Oh, we've got the global warming. We've got that climate change going. We've got the severe weather events, but it's not manifesting naturally. It is manifesting because man is using technology to bring all of that about. So apparently four million people filled city streets around the world, billed as the biggest ever protest against the threat posed to the planet by rising temperatures. And, ah, strike organizers, 350.org, Billy McGibbon. Yay, Billy, Billy. Hey, have you sang this song recently? Mr. Rockwell. That's Billy McGibbon. Bill McGibbon, 350.org. One of those corrupt to the bone souls work in this climate change lie. And I have posted videos on my channel, Bill McGibbon in an interview when he's asked, so Bill, who are your major funders? Oh, uh, well, uh, starts to stutter. Um, well, I, I really have to think about that. Uh, really? You don't know who your major funders are, Bill? 
because Bill has been saying my major funders are five dollars from you know uh, a teenager in India and ten dollars from someone uh, in Central America and oh right and then he goes on it uh, takes a while and then he comes up with oh there's an organization in Sweden I think and the interviewer says, well, isn't one of your major funders Mr. Rockefeller? Okay. And then he said, oh, well, yeah, uh, why are you denying? Why are you denying, Bill, that 350.org gets a shitload of money? Ah, but you've got to do that Obama thing. We got $5 from a grandmother in Birmingham, Alabama. Yes, 80 years old. She sent us $5. What about those bankers, Obama? Oh, God. Well, yeah, there were big, big crowds, Melbourne, Australia. Um, climate alarmist parents warned not to cause echo anxiety by terrifying children. Every adult should be outraged by, well, people like Alexandria, Alexandria um, or Casio Cortez. We're all going to die in 12 years. We've got to do something. How dare you? How dare you do that? How dare you come out and speak so dramatically? all over, and repeatedly. You're traumatizing children, and it's all a lie. It's all a lie. Climate activist parents are freaking out their kids, according to a group of psychologists working for the University of Bath, who say they are receiving a growing number of cases in which children are terrified of climate catastrophe and echo anxiety. Okay, this is our world. Psychopaths who don't give a shit about anything except, hey, I'm going to get money in my pocket. Obama, the Obamas. Hey, <laughs> I'm soon to be a billionaire. Wow. Well, that was quick. Or Ocasio-Cortez. Already, she has, well, made an awful lot more than when she was a bartender. Oh, and didn't she vote for pay raise or talk about wanting a pay raise? 174000 wasn't enough for her. These people are so sick, and we have people still listening to them and we can't get through. Climate experts, zero to 41, with their doomsday predictions that started 50 years ago, 50 years ago, why would we completely restructure our economy and sacrifice our personal freedom for experts who are zero to 41, who have never gotten it right? If you had an investment counselor who steered you wrong 41 times, would you hang in for number 42? But now we're going to hang in for number 42 coming from a 16-year-old girl. Is she's more credible, 16 years old? Talk about letting your emotions rule. Now I'm not going to dig into the facts and evidence. I am just going to be emotionally driven and, well, we're living the time of uh, relativism and everything's real. Oh, my opinion is as good as facts. Great. And you happen to be somebody who is quite, well, have you ever thought of going into therapy? Um, you're a danger to everyone with that kind of thinking.
Sometimes you just have to sit back and laugh. This is not funny. This isn't funny. Because they are going to be ramming down our throat now. Climate change. And we've got to get that Green New Deal. Uh, we've got to implement changes. And those changes are going to destroy, financially cer certainly, a whole lot of people. So the list of doomsday predictions, here you go. The years, the predictions, the ice-free Arctic in 2008, Al Gore, Prince Charles says we only have 96 months to save the world back in 2009. Again, Arctic-free by 2015. And that was in 2013. They only have 500 days before climate chaos in 2014. Overpopulation will spread worldwide. 1968. <laughs> and I still get people leaving comments. We've got too many people in the world. Well, do some research. I've posted videos on, yeah, United Nation reports, World Health Organization reports. We've got a fertility crisis going on worldwide. Fertility crisis, what does that mean? <gasps> Women are having difficulty getting pregnant. And guess what? We have less people being born than are dying. What does that mean? Ah, the population, the world's population, going down, not going up. Ah. Oh. Oh, but those are facts and evidence, Carol. Okay. Yeah, here we are, Obama. Obama. These people, <laughs> they speak lies continually. They still have a majority of people going, Yay, I love you, I love you. Oh, my God, you're, I have put you on a pedestal. You're never going to come down off that pedestal because I believe everything that you're saying. And, wow, you're so charming. And you speak so eloquently. And, ooh, the Obama brand manufactured. Do you watch what these leaders are doing? Do you watch? what the celebrities are doing. They fly to the climate change summits in their jets. They drive everywhere in their SUVs, gas guzzling cars. But they want you out of your car. Oh, they sit in their air conditioned offices, but you, you gotta turn that down because you're destroying the ozone. Yeah, and don't fly anymore. Oh, boy. I mean, when the hypocrisy becomes so glaring. <laughs> well, I also, in some of the articles that I'm going to be linking to, yeah, those Amazon fires. Well, I was sent this article by a subscriber whom I'd like to thank. Uh, well, it's not entirely a fraud. There are indeed fires in the vicinity of the Amazon rainforest. But the hysteria that has been induced by those fires, which occur every year at this time, is ridiculous. Wildly exaggerated claims have been repeatedly, uncritically in the press and celebrity ignoramuses and pol politicians, <clears throat> excuse me, have avidly circulated photos of pretty much every forest fire that has occurred anywhere in the world over the last 20 to 30 years, claiming they were taken yesterday in the Amazon region. All right, Dr. Ryan uh, Mu, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, of the Cato Institute wrote this, the international news coverage of Brazil's Amazon rainforest fires has been a complete disaster. News outlets published inaccurate yet easily verifiable facts about the number of fires declaring the situation record-breaking and unprecedented. Social media lit up with misleading claims about the loss of planetary oxygen supply. French President Emmanuel Macron threatening it's going to asphyxiate us all. The dry season in Brazil typically runs 
from August to November as farmers use these months to burn dried out timber previously cut during land clearing operations. Ranchers also prepare the land for cattle grazing. Natural fire does not typically occur in these tropical forests due to suffocating humidity, wet, dense foliage, and daily thunderstorms. What is burning right now is land near the forests where farmers and ranchers have cleared hundreds and hundreds of acres of trees. Easily seen by satellite imagery, which scientists finally examined and compared to the past two decades, the Brazilian state of Mato Grasso has been transformed into an ocean of soybeans the size of Iowa. On the periphery, the land is cleared at the rate of 2,500 square miles annually. The deforestation peaked in the 1990s, but lessened significantly over the past 10 years. The numbers of fires and cumulative area burn so far in 2019, on the other hand, is on a par with previous years and described as a near average by NASA. But hey, mainstream media, keep spewing your lies because you can, because the world's population, the majority of them, they don't critically think anymore. So you can spew anything you want now and it's going to fly. Hysterics robotically describe the Amazon rainforest at the Earth's lungs, as the Earth's lungs. And it is true that over the years there has been some deforestation in Brazil and other countries in the Amazon region as they continue to develop. But what liberals never mention is that overall Earth is getting greener. Forested areas worldwide are growing, not shrinking, in large part due to the increasing concentration of CO2. Plant food in the atmosphere. CO2 is great for the environment. It's great for the environment. We need more of it, not less of it. Oh, we need more of it. Trees love it. Plants love it. Agriculture loves it. But hey, let's get rid of it. And oh, right, they're bioengineering food now. Okay, eat that. You can also easily see satellite photographs. Deserts are shrinking, vegetated areas are growing. And think about all of that destruction caused by weather used as a weapon. There are many areas now that are greener because they've been destroyed and people have sold their homes, well, in the United States to FEMA under the condition that that uh, city or, or town would not build any structures on it. Get rid of the homes and leave it green. So it's going green, er. So what's going on? All right. Um, I was sent this by a subscriber earlier today. This isn't extinction, it's extermination. The people killing nature know what they're doing. And we're all doing it because we're driving SUVs while those oh, corporate paid climate activists drive around in their SUVs. Um, corporations are, and militaries are doing 98% of the destruction to our planet. Ah, but let's not look there. Uh-uh-uh. Why? Well, we've got an agenda, and this is all a lie. And, well, we're moving towards that new world order that so many people think is a conspiracy theorist. You know, where the globalists want full control over every aspect of your life. That's where this is going the Green New Deal. I want to play six minutes of this video. I hope, if you've not seen it, that you watch it and circulate it. It's very important now because the climate change liars 
have become so loud. And the use of children, well, I'm, I can't say anything bad about children doing this. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. There are some of those youth leaders that, well, they're going to be living a real comfortable life for the lies that they spew. But most children, they don't know what the hell is going on. They are now the thoroughly indoctrinated generation having been taught in school climate change is real. Well, when you have countless numbers of scientists around the world who have come out against what the IPCC is saying, against this climate change, global warming hysteria, well, guys, it gets really hard, but our voice needs to be loud, now really loud. When people say, we well, don't believe in global warming, I say, no, I believe in global warming. I don't believe that the human CO2 is causing that warming. A few years ago, if you would ask me, I would tell you it's CO2. Why? Because just like everyone else in the public, I uh, listen to what the uh, media has to say. Each day, the news reports grow more fantastically apocalyptic. Politicians no longer dare to express any doubt about climate change. There is such intolerance of any dissenting voice. Are some of the worst climate criminals on the planet. This is the most politically incorrect thing possible, is to doubt this climate change orthodoxy. Global warming has gone beyond politics. It is a new kind of morality. Now, the Prime Minister is back from his holidays, unrepentant and unembarrassed about yet another long-haul destination. Yet, as the frenzy over man-made global warming grows shriller, Many senior climate scientists say the actual scientific basis for the theory is crumbling. There were periods, for example, in Earth history when we had three times as much CO2 as we have today, or periods when we had ten times as much CO2 as we have today. And if CO2 has a large effect on climate, then you should see it in the temperature reconstruction. If we look at climate through the geological time frame, we would never suspect CO2 as a major climate driver. None of the major climate changes in the last thousand years can be explained by CO2. We can't say that CO2 will drive climate. It certainly never did in the past. I've often heard it said that there is a consensus of thousands of scientists on the global warming issue and that humans are causing a catastrophic change to the climate system. Well, I am one scientist, and there are many that simply think that is not true. Man-made global warming is no ordinary scientific theory. This morning, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change made up of... It is presented in the media as having the stamp of authority of an impressive international organization. From the IPCC, the... Inter the United Nations, Nations, Nations Panel. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. The IPCC, like any UN body, is political. The final conclusion are politically driven. This claim that the IPCC is the world's top 1,500 or 2,500 uh, scientists, you look at the bibliographies of the people and it's simply not true. There are quite a number of non-scientists. And to build the number up to 2,500, they have to start taking reviewers and government people and so on, anyone who ever came close to them. And none of them are asked to agree. Many of them disagree. Those people who are specialists but don't agree with the polemic and resign, and there have been a number that I know of, uh, they are simply put on the author list and become part of this 2,500 of the world's top scientists. People have decided you have to convince other people that since no scientist disagrees, you shouldn't disagree either. Uh, but that, whenever you hear that in science, that's pure propaganda. This is the story of how a theory about climate turned into a political ideology. See, I don't even like to call it the environmental movement anymore because really it is a political activist movement and they have become hugely influential at a global level. 
is the story of the distortion of a whole area of science. Climate scientists need there to be a problem in order to get funding. We have a vested interest in creating panic because then money will flow to climate science. There's one thing you shouldn't say, and that is this might not be a problem. It is the story of how a political campaign turned into a bureaucratic bandwagon. The fact of the matter is that tens of thousands of jobs depend upon global warming right now. It's a big business. It's become a great industry in itself. And if the whole global warming farrago collapsed, there'd be an awful lot of people out of jobs and looking for work. This is a story of censorship and intimidation. I have seen and heard their spitting fury at anybody who might disagree with them, which is not the scientific way. It is a story about Westerners invoking the threat of climatic disaster to hinder vital industrial progress in the developing world. One clear thing that emerges from the whole uh, environmental debate is the point that uh, there's, there's, there's somebody keen to kill the African dream, and the African dream is to develop. The environmental movement has evolved into the strongest force there is for preventing development in the developing countries. The global warming story is a cautionary tale of how a media scare became the defining idea of a generation. The whole global warming business has become like a religion. And uh, people who disagree are called heretics. I'm a heretic. Uh, the makers of this program are all heretics. But listen to a 16-year-old. Don't listen to any of those scientists. Right? Okay. This is a very good article posted yesterday. Extinction Rebellion, Green New Deal, and the Rebranding of Global Capitalism. And you know what? 27 minutes in now. Well, let me just read a few paragraphs of this. I will also let you begin in, on your own, if you'd like, to read about, oh, who is that little tiny lonely girl? Who could that be? Oh, that's Greta. That's Greta. And she just happened to, well, bump into the founder of We Don't Have Time. And he tweeted this picture out of this lonely, oh, 15-year-old, yeah, 15-year-old girl in front of the Swedish parliament. She's striking from school until election day in three weeks. Imagine how lonely she must feel in this picture. People were just walking by, continuing with the business as usual thing. But the truth is, we can't, and she knows it. Do, 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 we don't have time, tweet. Yes, he just happened to be there to capture that lonely 15-year-old girl. That lonely 15-year-old girl. Oh my God, what, what? Oh, we don't have time, who's holding that? <gasps> Greta, Greta. All right. Um, the manufacturing of Greta Thunberg for consent, the political economy of the nonprofit industrial complex, Act One. What's infuriating about manipulations by nonprofit industrial complex is that they harvest goodwill of the people, especially young people. They target those who are not given skills and knowledge to truly think for themselves by institutions which are designed to serve the ruling class. Capitalism operates systematically 
and structurally, like a cage to raise domesticated animals. Those organizations and their projects, which operate under false slogans of humanity in order to prop up the hierarchy of money and violence, are fast becoming some of the most crucial elements of the invisible cage of corporatism, colonialism, and militarism. Yes, you can read the synopsis because it's not just one act, but it's a lot of acts. And there are two volumes. So act one, I disclose that Greta Thunberg, the current child prodigy and face of the youth movement to combat climate change, served as special youth advisor and trustee to the foundation established by We Don't Have Time, a burgeoning mainstream tech startup. I then explored the ambitions behind the tech company, We Don't Have Time. Uh, act two, I illustrate how today's youth are the sacrificial lambs for the ruling elite. And all of these acts are connecting the dots connecting the dots to, oh, Al Gore, all of these adults who are using these children to get the job done. The Sanders Institute, ah, I just posted a video, Bernie Sanders. He started the Sanders Institute just like the Clinton Foundation and sure did get a lot of donations. Oh, but now he's running for president. They thought best to just mm, let that institute um, go. They, they disbanded that institute. But what'd you do with all of those donations, Bernie? Did you buy that house? Did it help you buy the house? That lake front third home of yours? 350.org. Uh, look, this climate change business, you know, it's intricate, to say the least. Very. And, you know, it's a web of myriad activists, organizations, corporations, NGOs, governments, firms, law firms, architecture firms, um, PR firms, public, private agencies, think tanks, colleges, universities, mayors, governors, town council members. It's so huge and so intricate and it's a large web, oh, the World Wide Web, Internet. We're stuck in this web. So uh, how to get out of it? Well, we need adults to turn on their thinking, their critical thinking skills once again. We need them to grow up, be responsible, do the research to find out that this is an utter lie they are traumatizing children and they need to be stopped. How do you get people to care? How do you get people to care enough? How do you get people to grow, to mature, to do the right thing instead of the wrong thing? Hell if I know. But talk about that story, right? The global warming story that was just discussed in the great global warming swindle. It's a story and people love stories. How is it possible for you to be so easily tricked by something so simple as a story? Well, it all comes down to one core thing and that is emotional investment. The more emotionally invested you are in anything in your life, the less critical and the less objectively observant you become. 
the magical science of storytelling. So yeah. This is, is not a drill. drill. My, My name is Greta Thunberg. We are living, living in the, the beginning of, of a mass, mass extinction. extinction. Our, Our climate is breaking down. Children, Children like me are giving, giving up their, their education to, to protest. protest. But, but we, we can, can still, still fix this. this. You, you can, can still fix this. To survive, survive we, we need to stop burning fossil fuels. But, but this alone will not be enough. Lots, Lots of solutions, solutions are, are talked about. about. But, but what, what about the solution that is right in front of us? I'll, I'll let my friend George, George explain. Okay, you, you look, <laughs> this guy is also part of the machine. Um, really? You're believing Greta? Really? Don't you think she's remarkably professional? Don't you think she had some staging help and acting help? And is she just some brilliant teenager? Oh, Carol, she doesn't have to be brilliant. She's 16. And she's been told the world is coming to an end at 12. Well, I would like to know. I would like to know. Uh, why is it? And the parents. Parents, you need to do the job of turning on that critical thinking switch that, well, our public school indoctrination centers have turned off. You need to turn it on again. You need to do the research, find out what is going on here, and then you bring that truth to your children. What is revealed to be the real undertext of these happenings, these protests, is essentially a cruel hoax on tens of thousands of protesters the majority of whom are young and ostensibly making their presence known so as to challenge government on global warming, climate change concerns. People whose stated reason for coming forward is that they don't believe enough serious actions are being taken to keep CO2 emissions below 400 parts per million. So let's try to deconstruct the multiple layered confusion that clouds the road to truth in this matter. Firstly, the majority of stop global warming climate change activists have a problem. They have never questioned the narrative of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, whose edict categorically states that the science behind its prognosis on climate change is this fact and beyond discussion. When you have so many scientists out there saying, IPCC, uh, it's a fraudulent panel, corrupt panel, uh, so many scientists who have been on that panel have come out and stated just what I said. And how many have said, ah, it's worthy of the nearest trash can. But it is easier to believe lies. It's easier. And when you're a child in an adult body, you want to have fun. So that means go away from me. I don't want to involve myself in anything serious and I don't care about my children just go away I will not do the research I won't look into it I will continue to believe the lie and continue to freak out children in the process just why would tens of thousands of people who supposedly have little or no faith in government not firstly question what a government panel claims to be an indisputable fact. This is the first major question in need of a clear answer. We shouldn't need to remind ourselves that the majority of governments are in the pocket of corporations and their main policies never go against the global corporate will, although they are usually disguised to seem to IPCC industry, government paid climatologists want people to believe their carefully scripted global warming climate change story 
because there is big money to be made mass producing the infrastructure needing to transform a fading brown and black fossil fuel regime into a supposedly green new deal fourth industrial revolution next it would appear that those who take on frontline street actions within organizations like extinction rebellion and this is extinction rebellion right here and whoa the leader of extinction rebellion that's another video extinction rebellion made the era of also failing to research the background of those who are financially supporting and leading the organization from behind the scenes or on occasions quite openly extinction rebellion the co-founders and the leading light gail bradbrook assisted by climate change lawyer for hannah yaman most of whose backgrounds have lines of direct working connection with people and organizations committed to exactly the opposite objectives to those of the green protesters following their leadership directors. Gail Bradbrook has a history of working with top-down elitist organizations committed to upholding the neoliberal capitalist stat status quo. She is quoted as being an enthusiastic supporter of Atpur, an organization funded by the U.S. National Endowment for Democracy, a body closely affiliated with U.S. government promotion of regime change around the world. Yes, it was Atpur behind those Arab Spring movements. For Hannah Yaman is CEO of Traco, of a, a business whose partners include the Rockefeller Foundation and Chatham House, where she is also an associate fellow. Chatham House, ACA, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, is perhaps the leading empire upholding think tanks, the, the upholding think tank in the Western Hemisphere government is using these quasi leaders to misguide and demotivate all those who could if properly organized and motivated actually present a serious challenge to genuinely destructive globalist environmental practices that play out every day of our lives but first of course the green aspiring supporters of extinction rebellion would have to realize that their rebellion never steps outside the confines of a globalist agenda. All right. Uh, but actually supports it. I'm going to stop now. But they're all funded by Big Pharma, Big Agro, Big Liga, Legal, uh, Big Telecommunications, Big Energy, Big Media, Big Bilderbergers, Trilateral, trilateral commission, big political leaders around the world requires considerable cunning and a well-developed knowledge of how to deceive in such a way that it appears that one is doing the opposite of deceiving, promoting pragmatic solutions to global problems, the very ones one has been responsible for creating in the first place, rebranding of global capitalism as something benign and indispensable to the greening of the national and global economy. Such deception is standard procedure, along with the by now infamous technique of divide and conquer for deflating opposition to the expansionist globalist agenda. However, as we shall see, Extinction Rebellion doesn't really need much encouragement to stick by the rules of the game, as it already bears the official stamp, government approved. I'm going to pick up right here in the next video. This Gail Bradbrook, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 look, 
I don't know how to get people to care about anything anymore. I don't. Um, but you might want to check out these articles on this site, which who knows, maybe it'll come up. Ah, great. My lovely computer. All right. Um, here we go. News from nowhere. Green Gal and the Technocratic Industrialist Citizens Online's Dystopian or Digitopian Nightmare. And it goes, uh, the, uh, uh, look, the, the investigation into this one, the manufacturing of Greta, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, and if you want to learn how intricate these agendas are and how many people are involved, then you've got to check out these articles. But I'll go back. Um, there's three pages of manufacturing of Greta Thunberg for consent, the behavioral change project to change everything. Uh, they mean business. It's going to be tremendous to plunder what little remains. And that's, these kids are being led to their demise. They're being led to their demise. And they're using this 16-year-old to get other kids involved. Led to their serfdom, slavedom, uh, to their destruction of their own freedom. Controlling the narrative, uh, a design to win a multi-billion dollar investment, an objective lesson in spe uh, spectacle, sorry. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> a 16-year-old sits down with Obama, sits down with other leaders of countries, is invited to speak at uh, government, by government invitation. Uh, look, man, a decade of social manipulation for the corporate capture of nature. Here's another sick, malignant narcissist. The branding of Alexandria or Casio Cortez by any means necessary. The new Green Deal is the Trojan horse for the financialization of nature. The house is on fire and the $100 trillion rescue. Oh, yeah, and they'll be stealing your pension. And uh, was I on page two or here's page three. The most inconvenient truth, capitalism is in danger of falling apart. The inconvenient truth behind youth co-optation, the political economy of the nonprofit industrial complex. And all of the articles on, hey, why don't we do an investigation on this, uh, these protests and, and this uh, extinction rebellion? Well, it's a series. This is part three. Green Gale and the Technocratic Industrialists for the Digitopian Nightmare. This is what? these kids are being led into. Uh, there are other articles, Dr. Gail Marie Brad Brook, Compassionate Revolutionary for Hire, Political Charities and the Brave New World of Professional Activism, Extinction Rebellion and the Theory and Practice of Oligarchical, oligarchical Collectivism, um, introduction some inconvenient truths about extinction rebellion and the climate 
mobilization movement. Um, you know, the uh, guy that took the picture of Greta sitting, oh, so lonely. Oh, I'm so lonely. The founder of We Are Out of Time, trained by Al Gore. Twice. The reason why I go into detail, and I haven't even gone into detail, because these articles, this investigation on Greta and on Extinction Rebellion, I highly recommend that you read these articles because you will see the operation very clearly. And it all springs from the United Nations and they're all working to push sustainable development agenda 2030 and now is the time to be really loud really loud because 2020 coming up I would I, my prediction most of you are going to feel to feel this agenda. Oh, it's not just going to be an inte intellectual exercise to understand these agendas. You're going to feel it. It's coming. It's coming fast.